Today we'll create a sign base excitation response dynamics analysis. We'll begin with a new part file and we'll create some geometry. Here I'll create a diving board. And we'll assign a material to the geometry. This will help reduce a potential source of error later when we're defining our simulation model. Next we'll create our simulation models. We're going to create an idealized part, which is where we'll create our mid-surface representation of our diving board, and we'll create a solution 103 response dynamics analysis and make sure to turn on the toggle for random and signed base excitation event. Now we'll begin in the idealized part where we'll get an associative copy of the geometry so we can mid-surface it. Next we'll go to the FEM. We can turn off the solid representation of the geometry and just mesh the mid-surface. Here we'll define our mesh recipe. And because I set up in customer defaults to inherit the thickness from the mid-surface, we can see that we don't need to specify a thickness for our shell mesh. We also don't need to specify a material. Here we can confirm that our aluminum was inherited from our CAD model. Next we're going to define a point where we want to recover spectral results. And so that this point will be robust, we're going to create a mesh point on surface and we're also going to assign a node label. So here I'll put 1, 2, 3, 4 as our label and we'll select the location for that point. And then we'll update our mesh. Here you can see that node now is assigned and the label is 1234. Now we can use that node to create a selection recipe that will be a single label where it will find nodes that have a particular label. Then later we can use that selection recipe in defining where we want our spectral results. All right, and then lastly we'll go ahead and define our excitation node. And this location is arbitrary, but I'm going to put it near one end of the diving board. And then we'll put a rigid spider to connect that excitation node to the end of the diving board. Alright, next we can begin to define our loads and our constraints. So here we'll create a user-defined constraint on our excitation location. Here we'll select our point and we'll constrain it in all degrees of freedom except for the Z direction, and then we can define our enforced motion location also at our excitation location and enforce it in the Z direction. Now we're ready to run our Solution 103 response dynamics, and this just takes about a second to run. Once we have those results, we can create our sign base excitation. So here you can see those results from our Solution 103 response dynamics. Now we'll go into the response dynamics ribbon. If you don't have it on, you can turn it on just by right clicking in the ribbon area. And we'll create our response dynamics analysis. And here with the response dynamics details view expanded, we can see 
the modes that we've recovered, the total effective mass at the bottom, and we can assign a damping factor. All right, and there you can see our damping factor is assigned. Now we can create our assigned base excitation. Here we can specify the output requests that we'd like. Here I'd like acceleration, and we'd also like spectral results for acceleration. And we don't want to reference a group, we'd rather reference a selection recipe. The selection recipe will be robust, where the group will not. The selection recipe will survive a CAD change and an update to the finite element model, but the group will not. We'll also go for stresses. We'll go for peak stress there. Then we can define our excitation. So here we have our enforced motion location. And then we'll specify the function that we'd like to use to excite that location. So here we'll create a spectra with acceleration in G's as a function of frequency in Hertz. And I have a spreadsheet here with my function which we can copy over from Excel and put it into our XY function editor. And next we need to do add-ins update table function that will bring the data back into SimCenter 3D. And there you can see the four points that were created. If we'd like, we can preview that function as well and finish creating our excitation. All right, so now we're ready to run. This one also takes less than a second to run. And we can view our results. We'll begin by looking at contour results for acceleration. You can also look at our stress results. And also our spectral results. And the direction of interest was the Z direction, so let's go ahead and plot those. Now, if we don't like the units for the results, we can easily change those. Since we're inputting G's, let's look at G's as our output for our frequency response spectrum. All right, next we're going to make a change to our CAD model. But before we do that, we need to make sure that in customer defaults, under pre-post, SimCenter 3D response dynamics, that we have allow override of obsolete status toggled on on the environment tab. All right, so next we'll go to our CAD model and we'll make a geometry change. So here we'll make our diving board longer. Here we can see our mesh has an update pending. We'll go ahead and update that. And we'll note that our selection recipe has updated. We still have that node 123 at that same location. Next, we need to run our solution 103 response dynamics. And once we've done that, when we go to take a look at our response dynamics, we'll see that the status is obsolete. But now, since we've turned on the toggle for check obsolete status, we're able to make it active again. Similarly, with our sign base excitation, we can make that active as well so that we can solve. And now we can see our updated contour results for the longer diving board and stress results, as well as our updated spectral results. 
SimCenter 3D signed base excitation and the digital thread enable robust associativity between the CAD and simulation models.